Now, police in the Philippines have arrested a celebrity televangelist wanted by both U.S. and Philippine authorities for child sex trafficking. Apollo Kibuloy surrendered to police after a two-week search of his 30-hectare estate in the city of Duval. He and four co-accused are set to stand trial in Manila for child abuse, sexual abuse and human trafficking. Philippine authorities say they are not currently looking to extradite the preacher to the United States. DW's Anna Santos reported from the Philippines for many years for us. It's good to see you, Anna. Tell us, who is Apollo Kibuloy and how did he end up wanted by U.S. authorities? preacher and the founder of a church called the Kingdom of Jesus Christ. He calls himself the appointed son of God and has over 7 million followers all over the world. Now, it was about 2018 when he was traveling from Hawaii to the Philippines on his private plane when U.S. authorities held him. They found allegedly rifle parts and some $350,000 in cash stuffed in socks. And that kind of like chipped the alarm for monitoring Apollo Kibuloy and who he was. Then that led to those accusations that you have already listed. You know, there's a long list of child abuse, sex trafficking of children, fraudulent marriages, and eventually fraudulent visas. Allegedly, he was bringing Filipinos over to the U.S. on fraudulent visas and getting them to elicit, uh, to solicit rather, uh, cash for bogus charities that he had run. Now, we've heard police have been in a two-week standoff with his followers at the vast church compound where he's yeah. based. I'm curious to know how he managed to hide from authorities for so long. Well, for a long time, you know, under the administration of President Rodrigo Duterte, Kiboloy was considered untouchable. Both of them are from Davao, and he was kind of like um, uh, a favored uh, or a friend of President Rodrigo Duterte. That's actually how Kiboloy also was became, became very popular. He was endorsing a lot of political candidates, and in the Philippines, uh, endorsement by a religious leader is seen as a vote for that person, and it, it's also a very powerful tool to get more voters also in. Now, you've encountered one of his alleged victims. Uh, what was that like? Tell us about that. I was on assignment in the Middle East and Qatar at the time, and I was covering labor migration issues when a child had come up to me and started speaking to me in Filipino, asking me for money. So it, you know, it was a little surreal. I was overseas and I said, oh, I, do I hear Filipino? And uh, the person that I was interviewing was from a rights group, a migrant rights group. And he said, yeah, that's a Filipino. And those are the children that are being brought over by Kibaloy to beg for money and the money is funneled back to him so this was the this is when we see now the the allegations of child trafficking that uh that Kibolo is accused of and how he uses the children the young women and girls also that he has trafficked to ask them to beg for money that he uses for himself now you you already mentioned it Kibaloy also has links to former president Duterte how did he manage to get so close to power he was uh, the spiritual advisor of former President Rodrigo Duterte. And as I mentioned, you know, in the Philippines, uh, an endorsement by a religious leader is, is a valuable election tool. And he has over 7 million followers. He has a YouTube channel. He's very, he knows how to use social media also for his, for his popularity and his um, preaching. So that's how he became popular with the public and therefore also became popular with political candidates who wanted to curry his favor to get votes. Anna, thank you so much for your insights. That's DW's Anna Santos.